Hello everyone, and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be answering a simple question. What is a computer? Because, like I said in the last video, there's really no point in me just sitting down right now and laying down a bunch of redstone, because chances are, you probably will have absolutely no clue what it's doing, or how it's ever possibly going to make a computer. So instead, I'm going to take a moment, I'm just going to sort of explain what is a computer. And I know what some of you are thinking, oh no, he's just going to sit here and list off 10 million technical facts and somehow expect me to make sense of them, right? No. I'm not going to do that because, let's face it, that's just stupid. I I'm not going to sit here and list off a bunch of facts because it's not going to help anyone. So instead, what I propose to do is I'm going to start with what you know right now. And that's why I have this giant black box label computer. You know you have some device called computer, and if you push buttons in a certain order, it does what you want. And if it doesn't, then you get angry and you start yelling at Microsoft. That's pretty much what you know about computer right now. Other than that, it's just this giant magical black box. Hence, black box labeled computer. So, what exactly is a computer? What makes it work? What makes it run? What is it? As it turns out, the definition of a computer is actually really, really simple. All a computer is, is a device that processes information. That's it, that's everything, that's all the big fancy term computer even means. So, in fact, if I wanted to, I could say, I magically have created a computer right now. It takes in some piece of information, figures out what you put in, and then it tells you what you put in. So, flip the lever, I've put in a 1, it's figured out I've put in a 1, now it's outputting a 1. It's a computer, it's processing information, it's figuring out what I'm putting into it, right? Surprisingly enough, this does match the definition of a computer. Although this probably isn't really what you think of when you think of a computer. So, there, at least you now know the definition of a computer, and that's going to be very helpful in the coming videos where we sort of talk about how computers work, but generally, when you think of a computer, you think of something else. You think of something that can process a vast variety of information in a very wide variety of ways. So, we're going to have to sort of revise our definition for the purposes of this series. We aren't just going to create a computer strictly to definition, because, hey, I already did that. Series over. No, I'm, that's not what I'm going to do. Instead, I'm going to sort of revise our goal to being just, can we create a computer to, can we create the best computer? And when I say the best, I mean a computer that can process not just one sort of information, not just a basic type of information, can it process any information? Can you invent even the most wild and ridiculous computation that only an absolute moron or someone who's completely insane would ever possibly want to do and make your computer do it? That's the sort of computer I'm going to try to create. This sort of universal computer. And that might seem like a really challenging goal at first. And well, it is. But fortunately for us, we aren't the only people throughout history who've bothered to ask that question. There have also been other people throughout history, and fortunately, there's been one person who in history who's asked that question, and who's actually solved it for us. That person was a mathematician known as John von Neumann, and he sort of solved this universal computer problem in a really simple and really efficient way. And, in fact, his way was so good that it's still the sort of general way we're doing it, even to this day, in our real computers. And there's sort of a technical caveat that comes with me saying that, and I don't want to spend video time on it, so I'll sort of post about it in the description, if you're interested. But yeah. So, with all that out of the way, let's take off this giant hood of a computer. Let's see what's in the black box. What, according to von Neumann, would make this universal supercomputer that can do absolutely anything you can possibly imagine. So, you ready? Here we go. Boom. This is, generally, von Neumann's sort of design for how a computer should work. He said the computer should be divided into three parts. A CPU, memory, and input and output. And this is very general, but it works. So, here's sort of the idea. 
First you have the CPU, or Central Processing Unit. This is actually pretty simple. This is the part of the computer that actually does all the information processing. It'll take information, and it'll just do something with it. And the way Von Neumann does it is his processor takes two types of information. It takes an instruction, it's some sort of information that tells the processor what it's supposed to be doing, and it takes some data. This is the information the processor is supposed to do whatever it's supposed to do with. So, yeah, that's a processor. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Then, we have the memory. The memory is also pretty straightforward. All it will do is it'll store information for future usage. So this is almost like a warehouse. You have this giant warehouse of all the information the computer could ever possibly process, and then it'll just take that information, you'll be able to send it to the processor, the processor will do whatever it wants with it, and it'll send it back to the memory in some other location. And that's sort of the cycle of a Von Neumann machine. So, yeah, pretty straightforward, not that hard. You have processor, process information, memory, stores information. And lastly, but most certainly not leastly, you have this thing called I.O., or input-output. And this is pretty self-explanatory. All you'll do is this will take information, it'll send it into the computer, and also take information, and it'll send it out of the computer. Because otherwise, you'd only be limited to whatever information was in the computer at the time. You want some way of sending information into the computer and getting it back out. Examples of this in a real computer would be your mouse, so you can use your mouse, you can go all over the computer with it, keyboard, com your keyboard, you can type letters in, letters are examples of input, output, you have speakers, you can hear sounds, you can hear me talking right now, hopefully. If not, you might want to sort of look into that, because that probably shouldn't be happening if your speakers aren't on, or if you don't have on headphones. Or maybe you have your monitor, it displays images to you. So yeah, you have all this input and output. And the ultimate goal of input-output is to sort of mask the computer to the user. So you don't have to worry about how the computer is processing information. It's just, you can tell the computer to do this, and the computer does it. And it does a pretty good job of that, because most people don't really have to worry about this sort of design of what makes a computer. So yeah, that's all that goes into a basic Von Neumann machine. So, just as a quick recap, we have the processor, takes information, does something with it, it'll have two types of information, one that tells it what it's supposed to do, and one that it's actually supposed to be doing the processing on. You have memory, stores information, so that's memory, and input-output, sort of supposed to mask the computer to the user so they can just have basic input devices that are ideally really easy to do whatever they want the computer to do with, and the computer will just do it. It'll be able to interpret these I.O. devices and figure out what the user wants them to do. And that's sort of the basic idea. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that's not too complicated. And in future videos, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of look at the system and figure out how on earth we're supposed to be implementing these things with Redstone. So thank you. See you next time.